Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Death and Boobies, where we look back at episode 5, season 7 of Game of Thrones, which was Eastwatch. Alongside myself, Darren Harper, is of course our very own Daenerys. It is Beth Crystal Wilson. Hello. Hello. I promise I won't burn you to death. Well, you seem to have a a bit of a a penchant uh, for barbecued people. Yeah, um, it was a quick death. We'll, We'll... Say that about uh, the Portales, but oh. yeah, I mean, we're going to come to this, but that for me was what, well, there are lots of things stole the episode, it's Game of Thrones, but that did stand out to me because it was just, it felt like Daenerys was leaning towards becoming the Mad Queen. Uh, yeah, she did look a little bit nut jobby uh, mm. while she was doing that. Um, and what's this thing about bending the knee? I mean, come on. She's obsessed, down. isn't she? She's really obsessed. We'll, we'll come to that in a second because we've got lots of Tarly talk uh, on this episode. But let's start with, he's alive. Jamie's alive. Did you ever doubt he would be? Well, I did because if he can swim with armour on, then he's a better man than most people. A lot of the criticisms of, of the end of last week's episode was the fact that Jamie's running on the horse in the shallow bit of the water and then they fall in and suddenly, you know, it's 100 foot deep. That's a good point, uh, yeah. Which is quite amusing. And a lot of people predicted that, that Bronn would have to throw away Jamie's uh, golden hand because that would be weighing him down. So we'll, we'll, I think we have to suspend our disbelief slightly with that. And one thing that people have talked about as well is the fact that they predicted that Bronn would, once he'd got Jamie out of the war, said, you don't get to die because if you die, I don't get my castle, I don't get more yeah. gold, I don't get this. Which, I don't I don't know. I've, I'm struggling with how they're characterising Bronn at the moment because in one way he's become very heroic and in some ways then he's just going back and saying, oh, well, actually, it's just because I, I want the money. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still, I still love him. Yeah, I love him. I'm so, his facial expressions in that first scene with Jamie. Oh, yeah. um, Yeah, they stole it for me. He's he's really good. I really hope he survives. One thing, again, later in the episode, um, when he and Tyrion have that reunion, I wanted a Bronn and Tyrion reunion, and maybe we've got to assume that happened off screen, but they they were such close allies before Jamie and Bronn. Well, he was his champion. Exactly. uh, In uh, um, In season one. That's right, it was season one. Back at the Eerie. So... I was disappointed with with that reunion because I did hope just even a handshake or even a nod. He didn't even look at Tyrion, was which is what frustrated me. I would have just liked a knowing nod at yeah. each other. A full on cuddle, I think. Yeah, I think so. Maybe the old chuck on the shoulder. Yeah, that's all it was Something needed. A bit it's manly. all that was needed. Um, but uh, Jamie's alive, of course, and he has to pop off and uh, and tell Cersei <laughs> uh, that things aren't going too well uh, and we'll probably all die. Uh, but also Cersei comes out with the fact that uh, she is with child. Yeah, interestingly, because at the start, when Jamie does go back to her, she's very clear, um, fight and die or surrender and die. I know mm. what my choice is, and as, as a general, you should too. But obviously, once she finds out she's pregnant, she changes her mind. And you have to give it to Cersei. She she loves her children, dead, alive. Well, actually, no, she's not that bothered about Tommen anymore. But yeah. um, unborn, she, she does wants to protect the children and despite the fact it's incest so it's weird it was quite a sweet scene between them when Jamie looks disappointed and says well who are you going to say is the father and she, she says you and the look on his face I mean Nikolai Costa Walder this throughout all the seasons but this season especially he needs an Emmy just for his facial expressions yeah well that's very true and he, he is so much better since he's had those curtains Carl yeah because uh, that was ridiculous. You're very haircut. particular about people's hair, aren't you? I, I think so, yeah. Especially his, because it looks good now. Yeah. <laughs> looks good now. Uh, anyway, uh, let's let's talk about burnt hair, because mm. um, uh, oh, the Tarleys. Ah, oh, the Tarleys. Mm. We've, we've touched on it earlier, uh, but Dick on. Uh, <laughs> he's gone. Um, and his Dick, dad. Dick off. Dick off, Dick yes. On, Dick and, off. Uh, yes, exactly right. Um, and uh, there's just one Tarly left. Samwell. Yeah, see, I'm wondering what will happen with that because obviously, I mean, I don't think Sam's bothered about being in charge, the Lord of Hornhill. And his dad said he couldn't inherit it. But now his dad's gone. Could he then inherit it and become the Lord of Hornhill if he wanted to in the future if they defeat the White Walkers? Mm. A question for the future. It is a question for the future. If we look at the odds about who's going to be in the race to the Iron Throne, uh, the one that's had a a lot of uh, money popped on, well, £10 by our uh, producer, Patricia, is Samuel Tarly. Now, interestingly, um, after, you know, the, the lineage of his house has now been burnt to a crisp, um, he's actually gone down in the odds. He's now uh, 22 to 1. 
Which, uh, I guess there's two ways of thinking. One is the one I just mentioned of will he potentially now be able to become Lord of Hornhill? But the other is maybe people are just thinking, well, that house is almost extinct because yeah. all the Tali forces will have come with them. So the remaining ones have all bent the knee to Daenerys. Uh, obviously, we know his mum and his sister are back at Hornhill, um, but they're women and obviously in Game of Thrones generally... Uh, women don't have much power but maybe I can't imagine Sam's mum she was so lovely and gentle I can't imagine she will do do a Cersei and say I'm seizing power yeah. for myself yeah that would be very interesting wouldn't it there's uh, there's more Tarly a little bit later on because Sam and Gilly have a, a particularly interesting scene as well uh, but uh, but let's talk John and Daenerys um, because ah uh, oh, he is getting all up in her grill uh, and uh, um, he's uh, what patting the dragon as it were <laughs> that's, like, that's exactly how I did that's it. He did it. That's he did, did it. Just, just like, like that. that. Really brave of him. Uh, I don't know what Drogon was thinking when he kind of went running towards him. And obviously, Drogon smelt the Targaryen blood. Yeah. And I just wish he could have sort of turned his head around to Daenerys and gone, Mum, it's your nephew. He's all right. He's okay. Yeah. He's one of us. Um, but no, that didn't happen. And Daenerys looked very confused. And she she was clearly very worried when she couldn't see John when Drogon's head was in the way. Yeah. But she didn't make a move to say, hang on, Drogon, don't eat him. I quite like this guy. Yeah. Um, so it would have been hilarious if Drogon ate John and Danny just sort of was like, eh. But the look in her face and her eyes after she saw that uh, John was uh, stroking her dragon um, was, that was, it was like, my wife said it uh, quite correctly last night. It's like if you uh, you got a new boyfriend and uh, you, he's meeting your dog for the first time <laughs> and your dog loves him. You're suddenly like, oh, he's a keeper. Yeah. And that as, was like that. As the episode went on, I was watching it uh, with a male friend and he laughed and said, maybe I'm not very good at reading women because during those scenes later on with with Danny and John, I was saying, oh, she loves him when John's yeah. saying, I'm going to have to go to Eastwatch. There's oh, a real crestfallen. look of yeah. sadness in her. He said he didn't think so. Um, but to me, I read that as she was, she was oh, gutted because yeah. she is definitely falling for him. And I think it is mutual. The scene later on at the beach where they're saying the farewells, um, I think John does look upset too, and there is a little spark between them, but they're still trying to keep fairly formal. Oh, he'll be bending the knees. So. <laughs> uh, let's talk uh, Littlefinger, who is, well, he's just an utter s***, <laughs> let's, be, let's be fair. That That's pretty fair, I could have said it best myself. Yeah. It, again, for a second I was a bit confused because I thought Arya would know that he's playing her. Um, and I hope she does realise. But then again, Littlefinger is one of the smartest men in the Seven Kingdoms, clearly, to have survived this long after doing so many despicable things. So maybe they're quite an even match for each other. I don't know. It, it, I, I, I've sort of, we'll come to some spoilers uh, very soon. Uh, but, um, oh, he's playing a dastardly game. Well, did you... So for people who maybe didn't see that letter or know what that letter was, the letter that Sans, uh, Arya found was from Sansa. It was sent to Rob back in season one um, when Cersei said, write this letter to your family, say, bend the knee, declare Joffrey as the rightful king and, and father can live. Yeah. Um, so I think Sansa in that letter has to acknowledge that Ned Stark's been a traitor, etc. But she was writing it with um, basically a gun to her head. Mm. And I ho would hope that Arya would realise that, but Littlefinger is clearly hoping that she won't realise that and it will turn the sisters against each other, which we've already seen. There's a lot of tension there already from this episode. Yeah, yeah. The, there's no... The, it's sort of like the, the initial love of like, yeah, you're my sister. Oh, yeah, I didn't really like they you. Never, yeah, they never got on before and Arya has... They've, the, the paths that they were on when they were younger, they have sort of followed them. So Arya is still very much a tomboy. Sansa is still very much a lady. And I, I think it was... John said to Sansa, you should have mother and father's rooms. Arya obviously isn't happy with that. Um, and I think Sansa could have maybe made the situation better by saying, well, John told me to have them because Arya listens to John. She she respects him. So I think if she knew it was John's idea, she probably wouldn't have had as much of a problem with it. I think her perception was Sansa's just taken this because it's the best room in the castle. Um, and Sansa is at 12 to 1, and uh, that stayed exactly the same to get the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. uh, Arya is at 14 to 1, uh, exactly the same. No movement there in the Iron Throne stakes. Yeah, I suppose their story is... It's it's very much contained to Winterfell mm. at the moment. So, and Arya, I don't think would want to sit on the Iron Throne. I feel like maybe after this episode, Sansa would because when Arya says you're thinking about John not coming home, you don't want to be, but you are because obviously that means she would be Lady of Winterfell. Yeah. And and you almost see in Sansa's face she acknowledges that. So maybe she does want power. 
episode already uh okay uh let's talk about gilly um which uh, I, I love gilly i think she's amazing and uh she pretty much nailed the thing on the head but samwell just ignored her when he was she was talking about yeah. effectively john snow is a targaryen it that was really frustrating because the way they did the camera as well and sam has this rant and says um, the, I don't care, 15,000 bowel movements. And as the camera zoomed in on him, I thought at the end of his rants, he was going to go, Rhaegar? Did you say Rhaegar? Yeah. And we were going to find out, but obviously they've left it um, up in the air and Sam just completely um, forgot about that. So we'll see what happens, but but we now as the audience know that actually, and I, I knew this was a spoiler a while ago that it was going to happen, um, we know that John is a legitimate Targaryen. Uh, his marriage, uh, Rhaegar's, Prince Rhaegar's marriage to um, Elia of Dawn, Elia Martell, was annulled, uh, and he got married to Lyanna. So, which actually is scary because that makes him have more of a claim to the throne than Daenerys. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait till he finds that out because I think he'll be finding that out pretty soon. Um, uh, and Gendry is back. Yeah. Is, there a, <laughs> is there a real point to having Gendry back? I mean, I know he's a Baratheon. Look, he's got a great hammer, but yeah. I feel this was potentially more for the fans because for how many years there's been there have been so many memes of Gendry just rowing on about Gendry, just been <laughs> yeah, and okay. they even made. And they even acknowledge that in the show because Davos said, oh, I thought you'd still be rowing. <laughs> so so I feel like this was more for the fans than for right. anyone else. And maybe just to have um, him in the group of, of the core people that get to go north of the wall. Yeah. Uh, I did really enjoy the scene. Uh, my favourite moment was where Davos was, Gendry said, um, y- you want me to come with you? And Davos was clearly expecting some resistance and they was going to have to talk him into it. So he starts to almost begin this speech and Gendry's like, yeah, okay, cool, let's go. I'll grab, grab my stuff. <laughs> it was a great scene. I, that, I really yeah. liked that. And I also liked um, when he gets introduced to John um, and Davos is saying, you know, you're just this random kid, you're not a Baratheon. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, I'll say that. Hi, I'm a Baratheon. <laughs> yeah. My fathers were best friends. And I thought that was that was really good. I mean, Davos, Davos is always so comedic. John, John, not so much, and no. and now Gendry is. So um, one thing he should have said to John though was, "I was best mates with Arya," because although he mentions that their fathers were best friends, oh yeah, he doesn't say, "Your sister's great." Uh, she was like a little sister to me. So I hope that Gendry and Arya have a reunion if he survives north of the wall. Well, that's the key, isn't it? Because they've gone north of the wall, the magnificent seven plus one, uh, and it was great to see uh, that uh, Dennis Pennis was in there. The mm-hmm. hounds going up there as well. The guy with the flaming sword yep. and the the eye patch. Uh, Sir Jor is up there with them as well. That reunion with with Danny and Jor. Oh, Jorah that was, was sweet, wasn't it? It was really nice, and I hoped that she would react like that to him. And I was thinking, oh, give him a hug, and thought, well, no, actually, they're not. That's not going to happen because Westeros, she's a queen. She needs to be formal, and he she might did. still be a bit scabby as well. You never know. There is actually a, when later on when she grasps his hands when she's saying goodbye, you can see that on his left hand it is completely covered in this red raw scar. Mm. Um, I'm assuming they had a conversation about that in private. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I thought that was a really nice reunion. I'm glad that she was so happy to see him. And I love the look between Jorah and John. And another reason why I think it, it, they are trying to make it very clear that, that Danny and John will get together and that she does have feelings for him is when they're in that throne room uh, with the big table and they're talking about those guys going north of the wall. Yeah. And and John says he, he will go. Daenerys is looking at him with that sad look as we've already discussed, but they cut... They, they show Jorah looking at her, and I think that's him saying, oh, God, not another guy that I've got to fight off. Yeah. Um, but I think at this point, I would hope that he'd just be happy. He's seen her with Carl Drogo, who she did have a great relationship with, then with Dario, who he did not approve of. Um, I hope at this point he's just going to think, yeah, I want you to be happy, even if it's not with me. Um, how do we think? I and mean, we're going to come to some spoilers very, very shortly, but uh, the Magnificent 7 plus 1, uh, they, that's how it ended, of them going that through the shot wall. shot of them where you, you have John at the front, you pan back, and it's just character after character. I know some people won't be bothered about some of them. I love, love Thoris of Mere just because... He talks about drinking all the time when he looks back at the hound with the drink. Yeah, yeah, and his, yeah. his accent is so cool. So um, I really don't want any of them to die. And what I loved about that scene in the cells is the fact that they're all sort of realising, oh, I hate you. Oh, I hate you too. And oh, we're friends. And just all these characters that are from completely different ends of the earth that you would never have expected to see together. Yeah. And now forming this this 
you know, ultimate boy band uh, going <laughs> north of the wall. So I'm terrified of, of who and how many will perish because I'd really like them all to come back. There isn't one of them that I'm not bothered about. And one thing that I loved um, was when Tormund was saying, who did you bring? The big woman? Oh, yes. He was very um, excited about Brianna Tarth maybe being yeah, there. Yeah, and also his comment about, <laughs> so which queen are we trying to prove this to? <laughs> the one who burns people with the dragons or the one who is with her brother? Uh, so, yeah, Tormund was, was fantastic. So I really hope he survives. <sighs> I wonder, I wonder. I think it's going to be a bit of carnage next week. I fear yeah. that it's going to be carnage next week, uh, but we'll we'll find out. Uh, just a, a quick note on the uh, race for the uh, Iron Throne. Jon Snow has moved up to 5-2, to two, and uh, Khaleesi has moved down to 7-2. to two. I think that's because we know Jon is a legit targ, as yeah. one of my friends put it. He's legit targ. Legit targ, not bastard targ. So, yeah, he does have more claim to the throne than yeah. now. I think you might be uh, bang on there, bang on. Now, uh, we are going to enter some spoilerific uh, about the next episode very, very shortly. Uh, so if you don't want to know anything about what's going to happen in the next episode, it's time to say goodbye. And you're gone. Okay, How right. much do you want? How much do you want? <sighs> I want everything. Um, I, see, I know what happens at the end, and it's just right. like I can't wait to see because I, 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 I've read that um, uh, Danny goes in. It all kicks off with the with the Walking Dead, and uh, that they get in a bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. Danny has to go in with a dragon to try and save them with Viserion, and uh, the Night King kills Viserion and then reanimates him. Correct, Mundo. <gasps> Yeah, so, and I think this is, maybe I'm reading too much into the trailer for next week, but you see Danny and Tyrion back at Dragonstone, yeah. looking very pensive, and I think that's maybe Tyrion saying, or Danny deciding, actually, we need, we need to go and help them. So, uh, what I have read is that um, they get completely outnumbered, as we sort of again see in the, in the preview, and there's a, a reanimated polar bear um, on... Wow. On the White Walker's side. Um, we lose Beric and Thoris of Myr. Uh, Thoris is, is mauled to death very painfully by the polar bear, Ooh. Uh, which is a shame. I hope he's at least had a, a fair bit of alcohol by the time that happens. Yeah. Um, Beric is mortally wounded by one of the White Walkers. I think, he's, I think that's by a proper White Walker rather than just one of the skeletal uh, creatures. Um, but he doesn't... He, he's alive when I think... Danny comes possibly but he and then John apparently gets stabbed in the gut and he dies but before Beric dies he gives it gives him the kiss of life because obviously we know Beric has come back to oh, life so yes, many times of course. so he almost gives his power of coming back to life to John John comes back alive the other everyone's rescued apart from John I, and I when I first read this I thought well that's strange why would Danny leave John at first before seeing the episode yeah. I thought maybe because she didn't really like him and thought he was a threat and he wouldn't bend the knee um, but actually now uh, I believe it's because everyone thinks he's dead. Um, the Hound takes John's Valyrian steel sword and the Hound is the hero and manages to get a white. They get away with Danny. Uh, John looks like he's about to die again. And um, Benjin for um, TV watchers, uh, for book readers, cold hands. So there's this whole thing in the book where there's, there's cold hands who they in the show they've made as Benjamin Stark which we never know in the books if it is Benjamin Stark it might be so he comes uh, and he has a horse so he puts John on the horse and says goodbye nephew uh, John goes off and um, and yeah Benjamin is killed by them and you write about the dragon uh, Viserion I think Drogon um, Rhaegal and Viserion are all there I think the reason Drogon's obviously the big bad boy that, that we all love Rhaegal if if things go the way that we might expect, John will probably ride Rhaegar because his dad was Rhaegar. Viserion is named after Viserys, who we all hated and nobody has any ties to. So that's I believe that's probably the reason why George R. R. Martin and the writers thought, eh, no one cares about him. We'll get him. rid of him. So yeah, he's killed. I think it, it, the 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 spoilers say he's sort of stunned, and then the White Walkers dra the I don't know if it's the Night King or just one of his his homies puts an ice sword through Viserion's eye and then reanimates him. I mean, that just scares me to high heaven that mm. the Night King's going to be riding a dragon. So oh I my think God. that will be the end. So from uh, the, there's nothing about any other episodes. This is quite a long episode. I think it's coming in at 71 minutes. Oh, wow. So if that's all north of the wall, that's 
that's going to be lengthy, but I haven't read any spoilers for, for South of the Wall. I'm hoping it's not, because that's going to be a really long episode, North of the Wall. Yeah, I think there is qu- uh, there's a few bits uh, South of the Wall with uh, Sansa and Arya I would and Littlefinger. So. Yeah, I would hope so. And maybe a little bit of Cersei as well. Yeah, why you not? Never know. Throw a bit of Cersei oh, in there. Yeah, well, maybe just a little bit, and then burn the rest of it. <laughs> Uh, there we go. That's Death and Boobies for this week. We can't wait until next week's episode and we'll, of course, be chewing the Game of Thrones cud uh, straight after. <laughs>